the image of the uh, anti-war protesters is the caftans, the self-indulgence of fornication and so forth. But civil rights, quite different. Marches, the march on Montgomery, Martin Luther King modeling himself on Gandhi, thrown in jail, he says, unearned suffering is redemptive. Now, the civil rights movement uh, gave rise, was concretized in the civil rights acts. And the big uh, uh, civil rights acts of uh, 64 and 68, 65 actually is when it was enacted in 68. The big hullabaloo was over the uh, act as it was coming to a vote in 64. Barry Goldwater opposed it. I flipped through old copies of the magazine you edited at the time, National Review, and National Review speaks of the act in language that is in places just dripping with disdain. Why did you oppose those, that act? Well, we, we, we opposed that act um, on the grounds that uh, it asked for constitutional liberties uh, in an age in which constitutional liberties were being uh, mobilized for this cause and that, uh, uh, rather, with, with, with abandon. And, and, the, and we saw them addressing a situation which we doubted could be addressed in that way. But I, I have a very full perspective on life in the South in those days, and it was life that simply assumed that uh, whatever headway blacks made would be made w within their own culture and that federal in interposition would be simply a renewal of the Civil War. That was wrong, but that perception was very, very engaging. And at what stage did you decide that it was wrong? What I'm interested in, did, Martin, did the movement itself change your thinking and that of your family? No, what, what, what changed it was uh, 10 or 15 years after it had passed, I said to myself, I don't think those constitutional arguments on which we relied were misspoken, nor do I th think them opportunistic. But we got here a situation in which a better thing happens than would have happened uh, by uh, uh, orderly pursuit of, uh, of um, a constitutional uh, decorum. I feel the same way by getting to the war against Hitler. I think it was full of deception, hypocrisy. Um, I think that Roosevelt did things with t entirely different from what he intended. And I'm glad he did. You look with clear distaste on the protest that you saw from the 14th floor of your hotel in Chicago in 1968. But you grant that the civil rights movement, that aspect of the 1960s, represents an achievement and a noble moment in American history. No, I don't think so. You don't? Uh, I think because I think the, the nature of what they did uh, was um, uh, anti-thought, anti-rational, the kind of thing that so caused, caused Socrates to leave seminars, the demagogy. All right. What did you make of the civil rights <clears throat> movement? Well, um, I couldn't phrase it better than you did. I mean, it seemed to me that it was the summa, really, especially Dr. King's leadership, of, of what it was to take part in the, the movement that we called the 60s. And I think probably the crucial moment for me, and I remember it very well, was when Dr. King and his address at Riverside Church said that despite enormous lectures from the black establishment and the white liberal establishment too, he, he was no longer going to remain silent about the Vietnam War because, and here's my third point about that war, as well as about the movement, all the energy that should have gone to the repair of uh, legal racism and poverty in the South, legally enforceable poverty and racism and so on, was going on the war. I mean, the, Johnson Im immolated his great society for that war. And the connection between the two seemed so strong and self-evident as to be, well, with me still. Lyndon Johnson um, broke his hump getting the Civil Rights Bill exactly. through Congress. No, but it, it broke his hump doing that precisely and bro broke his heart and other bits of his anatomy and other people's as well in Indochina and destroyed what w had been going to be the great, the, uh, the advertised great society. Now, we talk about lawlessness and the rest of it. Right. The, sixes, uh, the contempt for law. What, what we su only suspected then has been amply demonstrated since that there was really quite high-level collusion with crime and disorder and subversion and provocation by those who were sworn to uphold it. J. By the, Edgar Hoover, by J. Bobby Hoover. Kennedy listening Yes, in absolutely. By, right. by bugging, by planting uh, agent provocateur, by stirring up incidents of, of violence, by circulating false racist propaganda.